Guys, this sub is so light. It's almost like I'm carrying nothing at all. I have no idea how they even managed this. Yeah, not so much. This behemoth comes in at just under 110 pounds. It's 24 by 17 by 21. And with all Arendelle products, the enclosure is made of HDF, high density fiberboard. Basically the stronger but heavier version of MDF. The simplest way to explain the difference is essentially the wood fibers are more packed together. HDF has a density of 50 to 65 pounds per cubic foot, and MDF comes in around 30 to 50. The next thing you might be wondering is, where is the driver? And it's actually on the side of the 17231V. It's equipped with a 13.8 inch driver, and straight away I can tell you there is some advantages to this, and mainly with placement. Since the driver is on the side, it allows the cabinet to slim down its waist just a little bit. It's a fairly large enclosure, but only 17.7 .7 inches wide. Mind you, that's still not small, but when you're trying to cram a large sub in your front stage, possibly more than one, every inch can matter. The 1V has that single 13.8 inch driver, as I mentioned. It's stated to have an increase of 50% in excursion and performance over the previous model. And if you need to keep everything symmetrical, they also have a 2V version that looks exactly like this, but as you might guess, actually has dual drivers, one on each side of the cabinet. We don't have that one in today to compare, but maybe we can see about getting in a review sample at a later date. And you know, looking at this 1V height, you could easily bring this closer to your seating position alongside your couch, and many might just think it's a really well put together end table. Use a coaster though, this isn't a zoo. As I mentioned, one of the items I absolutely need to reiterate is how solid and well built this sub is. The matte black finish looks great. It's simple in its design, but the small details like the beveled edges, the groove at the bottom that almost gives the impression of a base, the driver cones sunk into the cabinet. I really like that flush clean look. And now depending on your placement, the driver may actually face the wall and people might think you have a mini fridge in the corner, but damn it, it's gonna look like a nice mini fridge. It also does come with a magnetically attached grill cover for my hide the sub people. I'm not one of them. And if you are, that's fine, but seek help. The sub is equipped with the Avalanche 800 IQ amp. It's a class D design, 800 watts RMS that is controlled in one of two places. This easy to read 2.6 inch color LCD screen with a selector knob, menu and enter button, or what I really prefer the app. I'll show the app in a little more detail a little later on. It's one of the most competent sub apps that I've used to date. Connectivity consists of a pair of RCA inputs and outputs and balanced XLR inputs and outputs. The outputs can be really useful for daisy chaining subs together in a multi-sub setup, as well as running the signal to active speakers. There's also a USB port that may come in handy if you have a difficult placement and wanna connect these wirelessly with any of the options that are available today. Generally, the wireless adapters can easily be ran by a standard USB port. Now looking further into the app, the strongest selling point is the seven band parametric EQ. Every room has issues, some more than others. But what you can do here is take out your handy UMIC mic and fire up Roo and start taking some measurements. Find the best placement for your space and then fine tune it with the EQ. To give you a quick rundown on adjustments, the bands are the seven selectable adjustments you can make. The frequency is basically the target you're looking to change. It can be adjusted in one Hertz increments. The Q is how wide or small the area of adjustment is. A high Q will be very tight and precise while a low Q will impact a large area. And the gain is the level at which you want to increase or decrease the volume at that particular frequency. Anyway, something to keep in mind here is don't always think about adding to correct something like this. It's oftentimes better to pull down the frequencies. Boosting gain across several frequencies often puts a lot more stress on the amp and could increase distortion. So think placement first, start with the corner to basically collect all the free room gain, get it close to flat there, and then fine tune it with small adjustments. The screen on the back is great, but there is something to be said about doing this all from your seating position through the app. But an interesting feature, you can actually invert the screen so you can read it upside down. It's a good but simple addition for those leaning over the top of their subs for their setup. If you have more than one of their subs, you can individually control them. Things like the parametric EQ, obviously, but also the LPF bypass. If you select it on, the low pass filter will be disabled. If you're using this as a home theater, I'll almost always suggest this to have it bypassed and let your receiver deal with all of that. If you have the bypass disabled, you can select between 30 Hertz to 160 in one Hertz increments. Frequencies above this number will be filtered. And this is the way to go if you're using this for something like a two channel listening setup. Make the adjustments based on the speakers that you have them paired with. Then we get into the LPF slope, basically the rate in which the frequencies will be tapered off from the low pass filter that you have set. 
Next is a subsonic filter. You can select between 12 to 31 Hertz here. If off, the amp will default to the internal filter at 10 Hertz for protection. Limiting this could be thought of shortening the stroke on the driver. You can play with this one for music as well. Might be able to tune it to more of a tighter sound that many do enjoy. Next is another filter slope. In this case, the subsonic filter slope. Same concept, the rate at which the low frequencies will drop off. Now phase, and it is adjustable between zero to 180. Sometimes we only get two options, zero or 180, but thankfully they did offer us full adjustability here. The suggestion here is to play a song you're really familiar with that carries a steady bass note, sit in your ideal sitting position, and adjust phase until the note comes across loudest. It's really as simple as that. After that, you get into the operating modes, triggers, wake up sensitivities, and things like that. I haven't had any issues with the app. Everything worked every time. And that's really something to say. Speaking further on the crossover slopes they offer, we actually have six defaults that we can choose from, three vented and three sealed, because this does include a port plug for the user who wants to buy a ported sub and then seal it. I get it and I do understand sealed subs. I have more than one and I do have a preference for them in several circumstances. But if you wanna buy this sub, my recommendation would be to try EQ1 first. It's the deepest and loudest configuration. For movies, it's an absolute must if you wanna get the most out of your sub. For music, you might wanna play around with EQ2 and 3. They have the most benefit for music, giving up a little bit of the low extension for more of a tighter, punchy sounding bass. I could also see EQ3 used if you wanna watch something late at night, something to limit the deep extension for maybe those sleeping. Getting into the sound review, I wanna put out a disclaimer that this is how this sub performs in my particular space. The way this sub sounds in my room at my listening position is not necessarily going to be the same way they sound in your space. So just something to keep in mind. If you go through the same steps as myself with placement and EQ tuning, expect similar results. The best placement for my room was corner loaded. This location balanced the flattest response and ideal room placement. Could I do better? Yes, but it's not very reasonable to place the sub in the center of my living room. Another reason why that parametric EQ comes in clutch here. And my listening tests were done with EQ1 to start with. I recommend you do the same and tune from there. I tested with Edge of Tomorrow, some crazy deep bass on that one. You might not hear it, but you're certainly gonna feel it. And Ready Player One has a fantastic race scene that shows not only multi-channel surround really well, but also the capabilities of your sub. And another one is Arrival. Around the 15 minute mark, there's a helicopter. The whirling of the blades creates a very detailed listen as well as feel. And my first impression of the sound with all of this was just solid, clean bass. It can be massive when called upon, but easily can just step back and waits in the shadows, adding the subtle details as required with ever creating that feeling of, you know, too much presence in the room. The space I'm listening in is open to several other rooms and would be considered quite large. One of these was enough to produce impactful, tactile bass that you can really feel, which isn't easily accomplished in my space. The amount is on par with other monsters in this category from PSA audio and the hard to ignore RSL 12S. The PSA I had in for review being the most comparable with this one as far as sound characteristics. Could I benefit from two? Yes, I certainly could. It would make placement as well as my root chart a bit cleaner, but oftentimes you can get by with just one of these. If this was in my basement where I'm building out a new theater, subscribe to watch that build series. I would go for two, provide a better experience for multiple seating positions. When you get into a large sub like this, it's often feared it's gonna seem overwhelming. And it can if you don't take the right steps to set things up. It can almost be like that drone sound coming from your tires on a rough road. But with the proper implementation, the 1723-1V sounded precise and controlled at all times, really at any volume I tested with. Maybe I could have pushed this into distortion, but honestly, I tested this at max levels that I would personally listen at, and it never appeared to lose control at any point. Now, if we wanna talk about the music side of things, many people think sealed or nothing here. And like I mentioned earlier in this one, I do enjoy a good sealed sub or two with music, but they appeared to bridge the gap quite smoothly with this one, utilizing some of the tech offerings on the amplifier. Your results will vary depending on your space, but give the EQs a try. You can really get close to that same sound you may seek from sealed variants. And of course, simply throw in the plug and run through the sealed EQs if that interests you as well. Just note there will be some compromises in output if you do that. I tested this with a number of genres. Nothing felt like a miss here. All very impressive delivery. Drum hits, bass lines, they carried the appropriate amount of weight. But even much more important, the details within the music that only the sub could deliver. 
The speed is what likely stood out the most to me. At no point did I feel like I was experiencing a blur from one note into the next. Maybe that's the amp, maybe that's the new driver. I'm not sure, but it certainly provided a good experience at any volume. Now, why should you not buy the 1723 1V? I could complain that the 1V is very large and heavy, but you can't have your cake and eat it too. A deeply tuned sub like this requires a large cabinet. And honestly, the shape they went with allows it to fit a little easier than some of the competition at this price point. Another thing, if you deep dive into the specs and compare, you might find it's not class leading in output in all categories. But at the same time, this really doesn't feel like a output over everything type of design. It's a careful balance of really good performance for movies as well as music and a rock solid construction. So find a friend with a healthy back, get some furniture moving sliders and find a way to move this one around. People get after me if I don't include prices on my reviews. It's important, but at the same time, budgets and needs, wants vary so much that it's really a moving target. Anyways, this sub currently sells for $2,049. I completely get it if this is beyond your current budget. It is for a lot of people, but just know this is a really well-built, feature-rich, versatile sub that could really fill the needs for most people. There is a 10-year warranty and shipping is included in the price. The purchase includes a 60-day trial period that covers return shipping costs for whatever reason if it just doesn't suit your needs. They also offer an upgrade program within the first year of purchase and you can read more about that on their site. I'll link it below. Wrapping this one up, aside from the sound quality, the 1723 1V comes with feature-rich tech, a fully functioning app, maybe the best in class, and build quality that certainly rivals the top of their class. I can easily suggest this one for the movie or music lover, and it'll work in what I would consider a large space. If you have any further interest in their products, I'll put a link below and you can check out the rest of their lineup. I have another product of theirs as well in the pipeline, and that one will be coming out soon. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe. Let's grow this channel together. Take care. Talk soon. See ya.